Ever wonder why the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona, is hotter than its surface? The sun's corona, a wispy shimmering layer of gas, is a scorching 1.8 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's over 180 times hotter than the surface of the sun, also known as the photosphere, which is a mere 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So how does that work? You'd expect the surface, being closer to the sun's nuclear furnace, to be hotter. But the reality is quite the contrary. The corona, despite being farther from the sun's core, is far hotter, although it's also much less dense. This is where the plot thickens. The corona gets its energy from the sun. It's like a child being fed by its parent. But as we all know, energy doesn't just magically appear. It has to come from somewhere. It has to be transferred. And in the case of the sun, this energy transfer is a baffling mystery that has left scientists scratching their heads for decades. The photosphere, despite its cooler temperature, actually has a higher total energy due to its much higher densities. This energy is what heats up the corona, but while we know the what and the why, the how is what's been eluding us. How is this energy transferred from the sun's surface to its outer atmosphere? There are several theories, of course. Some propose that waves carry the energy, Others suggest magnetic reconnection events where the sun's magnetic field lines cross and rearrange, releasing energy. But as it stands, none of these theories have been proven conclusively. Observations have not yet provided the evidence we need to solve this coronal heating problem. So we find ourselves in a cosmic game of Clue, trying to piece together this solar puzzle. We're certain of the players involved, the photosphere, the corona, the energy, but the method of energy transfer remains a tantalizing enigma. While we know the corona is hot due to the higher energy in the photosphere, we're still in the dark about how this energy transfer occurs. Have you ever thought about the sun's 11-year cycle of waxing and waning activity? It's a rhythm as consistent as the heartbeat of the cosmos, yet as enigmatic as the universe itself. This cycle is marked by periods of increased and decreased solar activity, known as the solar maximum and minimum, respectively. At the solar maximum, the sun is a cauldron of activity. Sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections become frequent guests on the sun's surface. But just as the party gets going, the sun enters a period of dormancy during the solar minimum, where it can remain inactive for months, even years at a time. So what drives this solar cycle? Well. It's all about the dance of magnetic fields. The sun, you see, doesn't rotate uniformly. Different latitudes spin at different speeds. This differential rotation slowly winds up the sun's global magnetic field, concentrating it and leading to increased magnetic activity. But then something almost magical happens. The magnetic field winds up so much that it submerges beneath the sun's surface, revealing a basic solar minimum magnetic field. It's like a cosmic reset button. And just like that, the cycle begins anew. Yet within this dance of magnetic fields and solar cycles, there lies a deeper mystery. The intricate physics driving the sun's internal dynamo, the engine powering these magnetic fields, is not fully understood. Why does it cause 11 year cycles? Why do the peaks of solar activity vary so much from one cycle to the next? These questions are part of the solar dynamo enigma. We have a basic understanding of the sun's cycle, sure. We know that the sun's differential rotation winds up the magnetic field, and that this winding up leads to periods of intense solar activity. But the detailed workings of the sun's internal dynamo, the precise mechanisms that drive the rhythm of the sun, remain an intriguing enigma. What if we could predict solar flares and coronal mass ejections? Now, that's a question that has intrigued scientists for decades. To truly understand the gravity of this question, we need to delve a little deeper into what solar flares and coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, really are. Solar flares, in essence, are massive eruptions of energy from the sun. They're like the sun having a mini-explosion, hurling out a burst of radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum. On the other hand, CMEs are giant bubbles of gas threaded with magnetic field lines that are ejected from the sun over the course of several hours. Both of these phenomena are the primary drivers of space weather. Space weather, as unassuming as it may sound, plays a critical role in our daily lives. It has implications for our power grids, satellites, and radio communication. A particularly strong solar flare or CME can cause significant disruptions, even leading to blackouts. Now, onto the million-dollar question, how well can we predict these solar flares and CMEs? 
As it stands, our current forecasting methods are probabilistic and reactive. We can determine when the conditions are ripe for a solar flare or a CME, based on certain observable factors. These factors include the sun's magnetic field, the presence of sunspots, and the overall solar activity. However, pinpointing exactly when one will erupt is a different ballgame altogether. This is where the predictive challenge comes in. Despite our best efforts and the vast strides we've made in our understanding of the sun, predicting solar flares and CMEs with absolute certainty has proven to be a tough nut to crack. It's like trying to predict when a pot of water will start to boil. You can see the bubbles forming, you can feel the heat increasing, but you can't tell exactly when the first bubble will burst. While we can anticipate when solar flares and CMEs are likely to occur, predicting exactly when one will erupt remains a challenge. And so, the quest for prediction continues, as we strive to unlock the secrets of our magnificent sun. Isn't it fascinating how much we still have to learn about our own star? Three key mysteries persist in our quest to understand the sun. The enigma of the corona's temperature, the riddle of the sun's internal dynamo, and the puzzle of predicting solar flares and coronal mass ejections, the coronal heating problem is a burning question. How does the sun's atmosphere, the corona, end up hotter than the sun's surface? The answer to this could revolutionize our understanding of solar physics. Then there's the sun's internal dynamo, the force that drives the sun's magnetic field and the 11-year solar cycle. Despite knowing the broad strokes, the intimate details of this process remain elusive. Lastly, the ability to predict solar flares and CMEs is crucial for protecting our planet's power grids and communication systems, yet our forecasting remains probabilistic and reactive. As we continue to explore these mysteries, we move closer to unlocking the secrets of not just our sun, but of the universe itself.